Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Easily Design Your Church Website with Church 360 Unite. My name is Peter Frank. I am the digital product owner here at Concordia Technology Solutions, part of Concordia Publishing House. More on that in a minute. I've been with the company for almost 15 years now. I've been working with our products in Concordia Technology Solutions for almost 10 years. Uh, and I am now in a very part-time position. I'm only here a few hours a week. So this week, I am here the full week. Next week, I go down to eight hours, and it'll be eight hours a week between now and the end of the school semester, because I am now a full-time seminary student. So this is my first career working with uh, technology products. Being a pastor will be my second career. So I'm only going to be here a short time, and that's why this is one of the first webinars I've led in a while. Um, but I'm excited to be here. I used to do these all the time, and it was my favorite part of the job. So thanks for allowing me to walk you through this process today. If you've got any questions for me, please feel free to send me an email at the email provided. I just want to put it out there that I may not be able to respond right away because of my class schedule. And so we've got a support team that can answer any of your specific questions. Uh, and I'll share that information with you later on. Like I said, this is one of my favorite things to do. Back in the 1990s, seems like so long ago, um, when I was a teenager, I helped my church develop their first website ever. And I, I was able to save a picture of it. You can see that on the screen there, St. Matthew up in the Chicago suburbs. Um, Man, that was a fun project to work on. As a kid, uh, teenager, like that was just so cool to put together a website for my church. They even put, featured us in a, a news article for our church district newsletter. It was fun. And ever since then, I've been just fascinated about using technology for ministry purposes. Um, there's so many opportunities. And we know that it is the word of God that works faith in people's heart. The Holy Spirit creating that faith. Uh, but the Holy Spirit works through means and word and sacrament, of course, but also through people and through the tools in God's creation. And so technology is one more way we can share the gospel with a world that needs it so badly. So Concordia Technology Solutions is part of Concordia Publishing House. We are the church administration division, and we've been developing software since 1984, right before I was born. So that tells you that this, is a, this has been something we've done for a long time. Now, that seems like a long time, but uh, not as long as our company. Concordia Publishing House has been around since 1869, and our mission has always been to serve the church, using the tools at the time to get the gospel out. Uh, you can see a number of our employees there at our 150th celebration just a couple of years ago. So we are now at 152, going on 153 years. Church 360 Unite, which we'll be talking about today, is a church website builder. Um, it's an online software because websites are online, and it allows you to build a website for your church and have some additional communication tools without knowing really that much or anything about technology. You might need to know a little bit about how people use things to put together a good website, but you don't have to know how to code or anything like that. And some of the more complex things, we uh, provide really easy tools for doing. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you everything about Unite today because it does a lot. But I'll let you know some of the things that it can do, even if I don't show them to you. And we're going to focus on the basics. But before we get to that, housekeeping. Always good to do some housekeeping. I'm planning on 50 minutes. I always go over. I should just switch it to 55. Um, but 50 minutes for presentation, 10 minutes for questions. Now, questions are a little bit different. You'll notice that all attendees are muted, but we do want your questions. I do want you to ask questions throughout. So the way to do that is through the GoToWebinar chat function. And the best way to test that I've found is to ask you all where you're watching from. So we've got a good number of people here today. Go ahead and test out your question skills, or at least the tool that asks questions, and put where you're watching from. Put city, state, you can put your church name if you want. Um, let's see who we've got here. We've got Jason from Reduso, New Mexico, Stephen from Milwaukee, Emily from British Columbia, all the way up there in Canada, welcome. Charles from Universal City, Texas, 
uh, Dana also from Milwaukee, Nelto from San Antonio, and it looks like Texas and Wisconsin are big, Jacob from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, another South Dakota, Milford, Nebraska. Uh, Jen, wonderful, welcome. We've got just a great group here today. So thank you so much for being here. All right, one other thing. A common question I get, and I always want to answer it up front, is that we are recording this webinar and we will be sending it to you. So you don't have to worry. I hit that start record button right at the beginning. You will get a copy of this. It may take a couple days to get there. Um, usually not. It's usually the same day or the very next day, but you will get it. I promise. All right. A few assumptions before we go too far. I always make assumptions about who I'm talking to. I am assuming you are not currently using Church 360 Unite. Um, that doesn't mean if you're using Unite that you're not going to get anything out of this. I just like to start at the very beginning for these webinars. So I'm going to pretend like you know nothing about it. I'm also assuming you don't know how to code. If you are a programmer, you may say, well, I could easily do that with some code. Well, you probably could, but a lot of people can't. And so we built Unite with the expectation that you don't know how to code. Now, if you know how to code, you can take Unite even farther, but that's not the purpose of the webinar today. I'm also assuming you're looking to improve your church's online presence. Um, if, you're, if you have zero presence, well, improving it means getting a website up. And if you already have a website, well, you're probably looking for a better website, something that's easier to use, easier to update. And I hope that I can solve both of those needs, depending on what type of church or what type of situation you're in. I'm also assuming you're limited by times, funds, or both. Many churches have those struggles, and we've tried to build Unite in a way that it saves you on both of those things. From a time perspective, it's really easy to update. From a monetary perspective, we've tried to keep it as reasonably priced. Uh, if you go through a third-party website company that will build your site for you, you're gonna pay a lot up front, and maybe not a lot on the back end, but they're also not gonna help you on the updating without a hefty monthly fee. And so we've kind of tried to find that happy medium where it's very much the tools are in your hands to do this, but we've made the tools easy for you to use. And while there is an upfront fee, we're not talking about thousands of dollars upfront. Um, it's a smaller annual fee. We'll, we'll talk about that. We're very transparent about our pricing. All right, if you have not already done this, I encourage you to start your free 30-day trial. And this is what I'm going to show you. If you go to 360unite.com and you click start free trial, it'll take you to this form. And then you will get an email like this. And I've already clicked on this link, which takes me to this page. And this is where we'll be getting started in just a few moments. We're going to start right at ground zero. So if you go ahead and do that, you'll be able to follow along with me. But before we do that, let's find out a little bit about you. I've got a couple poll questions that I'd like to ask you quickly. Um, and I'll share the results with you so you know who's here with you. First off, what is your primary role at church? Now, you may have a couple different roles, but this is the one they pay you for, <laughs> or at least uh, the one, if you're a volunteer, that you spend most of your time on. Because I know that uh, just because you have one role that you're paid for doesn't mean that's the only thing you do. And volunteers often wear just as many hats as church workers. All right, well, I'll go ahead and close that and share those results with you. So it looks like we've got an interesting mix of some pastors, a good number of administrators, and a lot in the other category. So I'd be curious to hear what those of you in the other category are. Feel free to put that into the chat. That's more for my own uh, curiosity. All right, next. Let's test my assumption. Are you currently using Church 360 Unite? Yes, we've been using it a while. Yes, but we just signed up. No, planning to start soon. No, I have no idea about it or anything about it. Let's see here. We'll give that another few seconds. All right. I think my assumption is quite good. Look at this. All right. 76% don't know anything about it. We've got another 18 who do know a little bit about it, but aren't using it. And then we've got 6% who are. So thank you so much for all of you for participating in that. Uh, that is very helpful to let me know, um, just because that'll help me shape how I talk about this today. All righty, next up, quick overview. 
just so you get the terms right. I don't expect you to know all of this, but when I talk about Church 360, that is a suite of products of which Church 360 Unite is one of them. Now we also have Church 360 Members, which helps manage your membership information, and Church 360 Ledger, which helps manage your finances. Now, Unite and Ledger don't really talk at all. They don't have much of an overlap, but Unite and Members do. And so if you use Church 360 Members, you'll be able to take advantage of some additional features in Unite. Even if you don't use Members, uh, but you use Shepherd Staff, one of our other products, you can take advantage of some of these features. Even if you don't use either of these, you still get a little bit of those features of member management, things like a membership directory. Um, you know, when you have Church 360 members, you can share calendars across those. So there's benefits to having more than one product. But I'm not going to talk any more about members in Ledger today because the focus is on Unite. Now, at its core, Church 360 Unite is a church website builder. But we call it Unite because it unites a lot of other tools. So yes, it is your website, but it is also your blog. It is your member hub, a place for members to log in and interact. It is a file sharing tool. You can have people download the bulletin from here. You can store all your bulletins in one place. It's your church calendar, the master calendar that is the source of truth for all events. And it is your mass emailing. And I probably should update that because you also have mass texting available with it too. So we call it Unite because it unites all of these different tools into one application. So as we went about building Unite, we had several goals. We wanted you to be able to build a website with no knowledge of HTML. And if you don't know HTML, then you are in the right place. If you don't even know what that means, because that's the web programming language. We wanted to make updating your website as easy as sending an email. You, know, you just click and type. We wanted to get past the idea that a website is an online bulletin board where you just post stuff, you leave it until you take it down <laughs> when you eventually remember. We want it to be something that is easy to keep updated and that other people can participate in and that it can be kind of a living and active site. We want to be able to share the right content with the right audience. Maybe you want to put your acolyte schedule on your website, but you don't want to have a list of teenagers' names posted publicly where everybody can see it you can have a separate side of your site where only people with logins can see it and you can invite your entire congregation to log in. Finally, we want to give you access where and how you need it. And that's easy with a website because it's always online. But we wanted to make sure that your website could be accessed on a phone. Um, you know, that is, it used to be that we talked about having a, you know, a mobile website being something that's really good to have. Well, now that's probably the number one thing that, you know, people find your website on their phone before they ever go on their desktop. So you've got to have a good website like that. All right, so a few things on that note that all themes are mobile accessible. These are some of the common questions I like to get out of the way right away. It does sync with Church 360 members or Shepherd Staff, your church membership so management software. We do have custom domains and email addresses available. That's something like mychurch.com or pastor at mychurch.com and support and training are included. So those are the key things to just kind of get out of the way. I want to assure you that those are available. So let's talk about our plan today. By the end of the day, you'll be able to set up your account, establish a theme and style, um, and add a few basic pages, all for your church website. And the way we'll do that is by going over the basics. We'll do themes and styles, page creation and editing, communication tools, and Q&A. So here we go. This is the starting point. Like I showed you just a few moments ago, when you start your free trial, you'll get an email that takes you here. So I'm going to put in a password, and then I'm going to put in some fake information. Ignore my last pass that shows up. So I'm going to put in the church's email. I'm going to put in the name, um, the phone number. We're going under the idea of Christ Community Church. And it's in beautiful Bakersville, Missouri, which... Uh, if you've never been to Bakersville, it's always sunny. There's never any snow, not even in January, because it doesn't actually exist. <laughs> All right. 
The next thing it's going to ask you about is how do you want your site map set up? The site map, if you're not familiar with it, is basically your navigation, the different pages on your site and how they all kind of line up together. In many ways, it's just an outline. Now, we don't expect that your site is going to look exactly like this. Every church is different, but we've provided a few helpful tools. So if it's about members only, like you're just trying to reach the people who are already coming, here's an example of what you can do. If it's for visitors, people that aren't there, here's an example. If it's all about proclamation, about telling people about Jesus, well then maybe structure your site in this way. It puts the right focus on Jesus as opposed to the church. And I say that like everybody's like, well, sure, absolutely. That's what we should do. The focus should always be on Jesus. Well, sometimes proclamation isn't the purpose of the website, even though it's the purpose of your church. The purpose of your website should be, how are you planning to use this tool most? If you don't think you have a lot of people who don't know about Jesus come into your website, well then it's okay to not have it be mission focused as much. And maybe you have a different purpose or a different plan and you just wanna start with a blank slate. That's where we're gonna to go today. Um, but you can do that and just add all your own. So we're gonna go continue. Site is being prepared. So at this point, Unite is taking what I've already put in and building my site. And you can see now I get to choose my theme. I have to pick a theme to start. And this screen will get you see a little taste of it. Um, and I've zoomed in a little, which makes it a little wonky in the background. So you can click through and see these different options. Some of the themes um, are a little bit better than others, in my opinion. We're going to go with the light theme this one right here. We'll click finish. So it's going to finalize my site. And now I have a church website. <laughs> if you want to follow along, I'll even put this in the chat so you can click on it. It is not um, going to be beautiful yet by any means, but if you click on this, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing, at least what has been saved. I want to show you that this is all just live and available online. Now you might say, well, what if I don't want it to show online yet? Well, nobody has this link yet. Not even Google has this link because nobody knows about it. I mean, you guys know about it because I just posted it in the chat, but nobody else does. So with your trial, you can play around with it until you tell people about it. All right, let's do the basics. So up at the top here, this is the admin toolbar. This is available because you are a user. You create an account. I put in the password before. The rest of it below there is your website. Um, and it's as if somebody is logged in to see it, meaning there are two sides to your site. There's the public side, and then there's the private side, the members only side. That'll make more sense when we get into navigation in just a little bit. But I wanted to clarify this right now. Some of these things are members only. So when you go, you're not gonna see this members link because that's always private. All right, there's a button over here called edit page. Self-explanatory, but I'll get into that in a bit. And then in the lower right-hand corner, there's an I button. This I button is where you can find help articles about how to use Unite. You can send our support team a question and say, hey, I'm having trouble here, can you help? It'll also tell you what the phone number is to call if you wanna speak with a live human being. We'll talk about support a little bit more. But for now, we're gonna focus up here on this admin toolbar. The first thing we'll do is we'll go to settings. So settings is an area that you'll want to set up at the beginning, but you're not going to use that frequently. You see right here is all of our church information. And because I put this in here, it's going to show up in the footer of my website, or at least certain parts of it will show up down here. Then I've got calendars. We talked about this being your master church calendar. These are the default calendars that come. And so you'll notice there's a little lock by all of them. And some of them are just common. Worship, education, fellowship, pastoral visits, that's tied in with um, Church 360 members, um, anniversaries and deaths, all of that is tied in with member information. But maybe you want to have something else like um, uh, young adult ministry simple as clicking create calendar and then you can go and change the color on that and change who can see it everyone can see that and click save you see these permissions show up over here 
and you can modify them. So we want people to see the worship calendar, the education calendar, and the fellowship calendar. And I can always change it. Green is good for education. Uh, let's see, blue is good for fellowship, and worship we'll put as red. Let's see young adult as orange. There you go. That's just to show how easy it is to set up your calendars. The domain, this is a little bit more technical, and this is where our support team can really help out. We provide the instructions for you there if you want to go do it on your own. But the domain is that nice, clean address, www.mychurch.com, christbakersville.com, or whatever it is. If you noticed in the link I sent you right now, it's 2022-0125webinar.360unite.com. That's what I set up. Whatever you put in there, maybe it would be christbakersville.360unite. It's not the prettiest URL. It's not the prettiest website address, um, but it does cost money to buy a domain. And many of them are like $12 a month. You can buy it through us for 30, or sorry, not $12 a month, $12 a year. You can buy it from us for $30 a year, and we'll take care of not only setting it up, but paying for it every year and making sure it doesn't expire. Um, $30 is quite a bit more than 12, but the $18 goes to the manual time it takes to set it up and, and renew it every year. Not much, um, but we also have the technical expertise to make sure that it always happens correctly. So we do have an upcharge on it. It's your call on which way you want to go. You don't have to go with us. Google Analytics, more than I can talk about today, but it helps you understand the details of your site, and that's entirely free. The standard for website analytics. Integration deals with syncing with Shepherd staff. We're not going to talk about that today, but I mentioned it before, and this is where you go to get it set up. Social links is kind of a cool one. It's a way for you to put your social media at the footer of your site and um, put it in once. You just put in the links to them and then you don't have to touch it again. Uh, it'll show up on the bottom of every page. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now you can see that down here. It's a really good strategy to link to your social media, but it's a better strategy to link to your social media in the footer rather than anywhere else because the goal is to have people to come to your church um, the church the actual physical location the closest step to that is your church website not social media social media is a great way to bring people in but you want them coming from social media to your church website to your church or just social media to your church but you never want to push somebody who's close to your church be like oh, go find that on our social you're putting them away from the body of Christ. And we see the website is kind of that middle step. All right, then here's where you'd set up texting. You can mass text everybody. It's included in your paid plan of Church 360 Unite. We're not gonna get into that today, but I just wanna let you know that it follows all of the best rules of text messaging. People can opt in, uh, they have to opt in. They, you can't just start texting people and people can opt out at any time. Um, it's a really powerful tool, but I can't get into that today. We're going to go to themes next. I have this real bubbly green theme right now that I don't really like. Uh, there's all these other themes that you have access to, and they all have fun names like Earth Tone, Heritage, Material, and each one of them has different styles, uh, presets as we call them. So maybe your church colors are orange. You can click hold on one of these and see that one. There's orange and blues with the text. You can preview these. Um, play around with it, see which ones you like. They're all free. You can change them as often as you want. Um, this one, Wonderful Cross, has a lot of fun images, but you can also replace the images. The one I'm gonna go with today, light theme. Um, I'm gonna go over here to this one and I'm gonna modify it a bit. I'm gonna tweak this one. So what did we call this one? Um, blue honey, I like that. All right, we'll go ahead and apply that theme. All right, this is what it looks like now. You see it's honey, because it's got that honeycomb pattern. Under themes is styles. This is your style guide for your church website. Um, Think about it as if like, we're publishers here at CPH. We have style guides for all sorts of different things. It's a way to make sure that the proper text always gets the proper emphasis. I'm probably just talking too much about it. You probably all know about style guides. But this way you can say headings always look like this. 
normal text always looks like this. I'm gonna show you a trick or two later on if we have time about how to use styles. But for right now, this is a pretty good uh, style guide, pretty straightforward. You can use other fonts. Like if you don't like this font, actually, let's go to um, normal. Here we go. This is what the normal text is. We've got a whole collection of fonts that you can use. These are all web ready fonts, meaning you don't have to install anything. Everybody can access them. I forgot I had my email open um, before because of the uh, sign in. I'm just going to close that. There we go. All right. So let's say you wanted to go with, um, well, I don't really like that one. Let's go down to Leto. I like that one. The nice sans serif font. Okay. We'll save that just to show that. Over here on the right, if you have too many fonts, like I just put a new font in, that font has to be installed in the web browser for everybody. If you have a lot of fonts, it's gonna take a little bit of time, or a little bit of time. And so that speedometer there will say, okay, you're getting into red territory. You've got too many different fonts, scale it back. It's a good way of saying, you know, we have too many different styles going on here too. All right, um, just checking my chat, making sure everything's still good. We're in good shape. All right, so next, let's go to customize. Customize is where you get to set what your presets would look like. So you can use any one of those themes, you can use any one of the presets, but you can also tweak it to make it your own. So let's say I want a different background. I can go, oops, I go here to background and I say browse and I go and upload. And I've got some on my desktop right now, this one here. This background is a little bit less exciting because it just has the dark blue with some shading on it. I don't really care for the honeycomb pattern, so I remove that. Um, I can also go and play around and change the background color. So um, in certain spots, the background might show if the image is not large enough. So I've got one here. Um, Oh yeah, that's already in place, the right color. I'm gonna go down to this here. The accent color will show up in different places. I'm gonna make that a little bit lighter. The link color, I'm gonna want to have be this more orange color so it stands out. There we go. And I'm gonna do the heading shadow color, that same one, while leaving the heading color white. Save the changes. So you can see it's not much different. Um, but yeah, that's not bad. We'll stick with that for now. If we have time, I'll add a church logo, but I'll show some of the caveats that come with that. Now, under advanced is a place for you to put custom code. If you know what you're doing, you can do this. If you don't know what you're doing, don't worry about it. Same with edit. This is for our advanced users who know how to code and really want to tailor their site to meet their needs. Um, and sometimes we'll get calls from our, um, on our support team that says, I want to do something to my website. I want to you know, change the way this looks, but I can't figure out how. Well, sometimes our support team will say, well, you can just add this code in and it'll work. And so if they help you add code, you don't have to do anything with it. It will just go in one of these spots and remain there and your website will work with it. So just keep that in mind, that that's a possibility. Moving from the right to the left, we've got users. Now users is um, where you can invite other people to participate in your website. You can invite as many users as you'd like. There is a restriction on the number of admins, the number of people that can do everything on your site. And that comes with the size of your plan, which we'll talk about later on. So depending on what size you have, you may have more or less users, but you always have at least two users, or sorry, two admins available to you. And I recommend having two. So if one of them goes away, you always have somebody else who can access all the things in your site. But then you can also invite people. So if you wanna invite a member to log in, they may not be able to change anything on your site, but they can view things behind the login, meaning the private side of your website. We'll look at that in just a moment. You can set up mailing lists where you can send everybody a mass email, or um, you can also, this communication one, 
would then say, I want to send everybody an email here or a text here. So the mailing list is where you combine people in the list. The communication is where you actually send things out. Now, I haven't set up texting yet, so I can't text from here. But email I can. Email will actually open up my default email and allow me to send emails to Unite and mass send them out to everybody else. I mean, you don't have to pay for a fancy email tool if you don't want to. We don't give you all of the, you know, the email design stuff. You're just using Outlook or Gmail or one of those. But you can at least send a mass email without having to worry about um, running into limits, you know, too many character limits or those things. And people have the option of opting out doing it this way. So you follow all the email privacy laws. So nice little feature. Um, we'll talk about that more probably another time. I don't think we'll get to it today. Now, activity gives you some things that are going on. The event log, such as adding users. Email log gives you history on that. Texting opt-in lets you know who's asking about text that they want to get in. And then comments is related to posts, which is the next thing. Posts, well, there's nothing here right now because we don't have any blogs uh, or feeds, as we call them in Unite. I'll show you how to add those in just a moment. But this is where you'd manage your blog posts. And these are fantastic for things like newsletters or prayer requests or you know, individual ministries that want to provide their own updates. There's all sorts of things you can use this for. And that takes us to pages, where we'll spend a good portion of time today. You see, pages is what your website is made of. Pages is what contains the information. And your navigation is what helps you get people to those pages. So we started with a blank slate. And there's a, a number of approaches we can take. I'm going to go pretty simple today because we've only got well, 30 minutes left. So we've got a home page that comes up by default. We have a calendar page, which you cannot change or delete. We have a member directory, which you cannot change or delete. But then you can add as many pages as you want, and you can also add categories. There's another type of page, um, two other types of pages I'll show you in just a moment. So let's think about this. What's the main thing we want? Well, you gotta have a homepage, we've got that, check. You gotta have a place that tells people your worship times. And while you could put that on the homepage, and you should, you should have a separate page for worship times. So I'm gonna go up here to the top right. You can add a category or you can add a page. Click add page, and I'm doing a blank old page. If you want, you can actually use one of these templates. Now, these templates, well, templates are not the, uh, the right word for it. These predefined pages, which give you some prompts about what to include on the page. So we'll do worship times. And we'll call it worship times. I'll click enter to save that. And now this is an available menu item. It's in the draft state. So when I click save changes, my page is saved. But when I go over here and go back, you do not see worship times on the top. If I click pages and drag it over to my menu, click save changes, close out of here, there it is. I now have worship times on my site. Now, give me just one more second. If I go to pages and I select worship times, I'm gonna publish it and it's already public I can make it private if I want, but it's already public. I'm going to click Save Changes. Now, if you're following along at home, you'll be able to refresh and see that Worship Times is available. Now, when I click on Worship Times, it's this default text. It tells you some things you might want to include on there. You don't have to. It's just kind of helping you get started. Let's do a few more pages. Worship Times is key, and I'll probably put that up higher, but maybe I want to go a little bit more detailed. Let's do a category called I'm new. I love the I'm new category because it tells visitors exactly where they should go. So you drag and drop underneath it and you see it makes this kind of outline. So I'm new, what else would go under I'm new? Well, if you click the add page, you can see a what to expect page is one of those. We'll put that there. And we can uh, click there, what we believe. Oh, that's a pretty good thing to have. Put that there. Well, let's see what else we got here. Mission, vision, directions, Jesus. Well, it's always a good thing to talk about Jesus. Let's go ahead and create that page and say, who is Jesus? So if you got people who are brand new to the faith or you know not even in the faith, but they want to know what you believe, 
well, what we believe is good, but let's introduce them to Jesus. So we'll drag these in here. Worship times is first, what we believe, and who is Jesus? That's good. Now, you talk a lot about them in the I am new, the, the visitors, but it's okay to talk about yourself too. People want to know about that. So let's create a new category called about us. Drag that in. Let's see what some of the options are here. We've got mission and vision. That's good. We'll save that one. We can do our staff. That's good. What else do we have here? Let's talk about contact us. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. So we'll put these all under about us. So we'll do mission vision first, our staff and contact us. Now you notice all of these are set up as drafts. Let's go ahead and publish all of them. They're pretty much blank pages. They just have instructions right now. All right, those are all published. We'll save. Now remember, I created two categories. Categories are not pages themselves. They are just collections of pages. So when I hover over a category, it shows me what pages are underneath it. But I don't, I'm not able to click on it. Now people say, well, I want an About Us page that I can click on. Well, remember, you are planning for a mobile page. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to hit Actually, let me take this out of admin. I'm gonna to go to an incognito page. So this is what it looks like if I'm not signed in. Go to the home page there. This is what you're probably seeing if you're following along at home. I'm gonna hit F12, which says, hey, I can see behind the scenes and see what it looks like on a phone. Let's do an iPhone 12 Pro. I do not have that. I'll just do a refresh, make sure it's showing up. Yeah, it's still showing up right. This is what my church website looks like on a phone. And I get this menu up here. And this is why categories cannot be clicked on. Because when you come here, if you click on this, you want it to expand. You don't want it to go to a page. And so you just click on these and expand. So you can see as we're going along, there's a full mobile site being built in the background. And that'll change some of your decisions about what you put on each page. Can't talk too much more about strategy today, even though I love that conversation. All right, back to building the site. So let's go to pages. And you say, all right, that's great, Peter. We've got all of those pre-built pages. But what about my young adult ministry? We've created a calendar for that before. There's no young adult ministry template here. Again, template's not the best word, but prompt. You can just create a blank page. Click create page, boom, and we'll type in young adult ministry. Boom, there it is. Now that one won't have anything on it. So I'm going to publish that. I'm going to save my changes, and I'm just going to click on this page. And now I'm on my young adult page. All it says is young adult ministry. That's it. Well, let's talk about editing a page, and then we'll get into our two other pages in just a moment. So if I go to Pages, and I go back here to Home, or if I just click on Home, it takes me to the same place, I can edit my home page. You might have guessed this before when I mentioned it, but this button over here on the left, Edit Page, is where you go to edit it. So I click Edit Page, and I get some settings over here. It tells me that it's published. It tells me what the URL ends with, Home tells me the page title. Maybe I'll say welcome instead of home. And then a meta description. The meta description is what shows up in search engines like Google when it brings your page up for people to see. So it's good to have that. Otherwise, it takes the first text on the page, which may or may not be what you want. Now, when I go over here, you see I've got this box that's showing up. When I hover over it, it goes from gray to blue. Then I have these pluses and minus, or pluses, there's no minuses, just pluses <laughs> over on this on the top and the bottom. This allows me to add more cells. A cell is what you put content in. Content is the information you want people to see. If I click on this edit button here, it opens up the cell for me and I can begin typing. You see, I can type just like an email. Now, I've already put in on a separate document 
some helper text to help me get going. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. You see, this here is a bunch of um, lorem ipsum text. It's fake words that kind of look like real words. And there goes the spell check, as you can see. I just wanted to have something with that, I'll type it. Now, each one of these is a paragraph, at least it should be. And when I click on this, I may want to change the style. Now, all of these, when I click on them, say normal style. But if I select heading one, and go here and say heading one, oh, they're not all paragraphs. I did that wrong. Let's do this. Delete, enter. There we go. A full paragraph break will actually get me to what I'm looking at. So we won't do all of that because uh, I should have planned that out better. But that's okay. All right, we'll do these. So heading one now is its own paragraph. When I select that and click heading one, just that shows up as a heading. If I go here and say heading two, just that shows up as a heading. But it's a different style. You see, this one has a bar underneath. This one doesn't. All right, I'll go here and click save. And now this is locked in. If I hit publish, you'll be able to refresh the page and see this. This is live on the site. I'll go back to edit, and I'm going to add a different cell. You see, that is one cell, and it's just fine to have one cell on your page. Some pages are better with one cell. You don't want to get too complicated. But this is our home page. We should show more than just text. So I'm going to go up here to the top, click this plus button, and now I have a new cell above it. This cell is going to be different. It's good to use images, and images can often be one of the hardest things. Like anybody can type, but putting a good image can take some talent. And so I don't want to make you assume that having Unite is going to give you all the right images. We don't provide images for you, but there's lots of sites that provide stock images. The best thing to do is to take your own photos, or if you're not good at taking photos, hire somebody to take photos. But let's go ahead and show here. We're going to do a settings button change on here and do edit cell type, we're going to change this to what's called a carousel. A carousel is rotating images. Now, people have different feelings on carousels. I used to really dislike them. I've grown to like them a little bit more. They're not my favorite. I would recommend just an image there. But carousels have their place, and they're a pretty cool tool. So I'll show you how to use it. So we change the cell to be a carousel cell. <laughs> a little repetitive there. We'll go to edit and we get a different kind of screen. First, it says, do you want this to auto advance? And if so, after how many seconds? Maybe this or maybe five. And then the height, how tall do you want it to be? I'm going to put 400 pixels. And then you start adding images. So I click add image. Uh, I'm going to select an image. Now, if I have it uploaded, it'll show up here, but I don't. So I'm going to upload it now. Let's do this one. So I've uploaded my image, I've selected it, I click Add, and now that's there. Let's do another one. Go down here, I gotta upload another image. Load this one. Select it. Click add. Now, if I wanted to, I would put I could put in a heading and say something like join us for worship. Oops, there you go. And then I can do linkable and I can link to a Unite page and say this is our worship times. And I can open it um, in another tab if I wanted to. And then this one I could say, who is Jesus? And make it linkable, unite page. Who is Jesus? And open that in another tab. Let's save that. Now, when I save that, you see in the top right corner, there's a little yellow dot. That's just telling me there's changes. If I just close out a edit page, that'll all go away because I haven't published it yet. So you can mock up your site to get it ready to go and then publish it. You don't have to make your changes live. But when I click edit page, it's back to that. So let's go ahead and publish. Show what that looks like. There we go. And I close out of here. This is what the carousel looks like. A nice big image that I can rotate through. And when I click on the image, it takes me to the page that I set up. 
So you don't have to know how to link all those things. It lets you do it automatically. All right, let's do, what's my time? Ooh, I'm running out of time. Let's go ahead and do um, one more set here. So you go here and you click plus in between. And now I can go to the right and I can do plus two more times. So I have three cells. I can drag the size of the cells like this to get three equal columns. And then in each one, I'll go and add an image. So this one here you see is just my regular cell type. I'll go up here, add image. I can add more from my desktop. In fact, I can upload all three at once, add them to make them available, and do one at a time. There's that one. I'll click here. Go in this one. Up, add another image. We will do this. And then I'll go in here. Image. And this. Now I can add text by clicking here, clicking enter, and say something like Sunday school and visitor information and then sermons and maybe i should make that be you know heading two and probably need links i'm not going to do links right now but i'll save each of these and publish it and so i'm starting to get a pretty nice looking website now granted can i do better sure but I'm rushing through this and I'm doing okay. This doesn't look bad at all, at least in my opinion. So you can quickly add things to your site. Images make all the difference. Um, but sometimes functionality means something too. So like this one, sermons. Well, you could have a page for sermons and just add them one cell after the next, or you could use what's called a feed. Up here under pages, under new page, a feed is essentially like a blog. I'm going to go ahead and create a page, call this sermons, drag it out here, and I'm going to make this public. All right, save changes. We'll click on sermons. So when I go here, it says there's no posts. But if I click edit page, now I can add a new post. So we'll say a uh, sermon for January, what was that, 23rd? Yeah. And then I can put in some uh, text. We'll make it a very short sermon. There you go. <laughs> and we'll click Create. Now well, let's publish it. Just publish it. We can also schedule these to publish at a later date. We'll click Publish. All right. So now I go out of Edit Page. Um, we'll go ahead and re refresh that. There's my sermon. It's just posted today by me. And when I click on it, I can see the entire post and put comments on there too. Very quick and easy way of starting up a blog. There's plenty you can do. You can add images and videos and other things, but this is the, just the fast start for it. Um, and comments are something that users can do, but you don't make them available outside of your users. All right, there is a lot that I've shown you already, and we've only got a few minutes left in the presentation. Um, but I do have some, uh, a number of questions coming through, so I wanna get to those pretty soon. Let's double check my outline and just see if where I should go next. Let's talk about groups. We talked about the young adult ministry before. The young adult ministry right up there, just a page. Young adults like to communicate just like all people. And so uh, young adults may be more comfortable communicating online than other generations, uh, just because we've kind of grown up doing that. And I still include myself in young adults because I'm not quite 40 yet, but I'm very quickly approaching that. And I don't know if I can call myself a young adult much longer. But we'll go here to add a page. And I'm gonna add a group page here. A group page is like a site within a site. We're going to call this Young Adults to separate it from Young Adult Ministry. I'm going to, in fact, leave this out of the navigation because I only want members to participate in it. So now I'll hit Save, and then I'll go click on this link. And you'll see this page is a little bit different. It's got its own navigation. In fact, the navigation includes things like discussion, events, 
members, and then of course edit this group in membership settings. As the admin, I get a few of the additional ones. But you can have people participate in this, have the site be completely unique to them, have their own calendar. Uh, you can even set it up so that a group leader can edit this page without editing any other page on their website. And so when you click edit page, this is the home page for that, you get those same tools where you just have the cells and you can edit them and type in text, all of that fun stuff just right here, just for this page. So I'll click save draft. Let's go edit this group. I can add a description and I'll do that here. I can add additional pages if I want and put pages in the navigation. Maybe um, when I say we have you know, Bible study downloads, maybe that Bible study meets individually and they have different downloads to share. I can even have different permission levels for the different groups. Now downloads will come up once I save and update the group. But right now everything's set to just users. But maybe I say, well, I don't want to show the members to everybody, just group members, or group members or the group leaders. So I update that group. And then let's go ahead and publish that page. There we go, publish. So people who can log into the site can see this page and no one else. And now on the adult, young adult ministry page, if I wanted to, I could go in here, click edit, make that title and say, join our online group. And we've got this thing called a, a group link where it says, go on to young adults and we'll make that large. And putting that in there gives a preview of the group, tells who the group leader is and automatically links to that page. So click save, publish, get out of there. And that's what that looks like. So if I change, maybe we come up with a fun name for the young adult ministry, I can change it one place and it'll update it here. If I change the leaders of the group, it'll update it here. I don't have to go and manually update everything myself. And so it's all interconnected. It's all united together. There's so many more fun tools I can show you in Unite. Unfortunately, I'm already running out of time. So I wanted to talk about a few other things. First off, these kind of webinars are just one of the things we do, but we have other training resources. We do have other training webinars that go into deep dives in certain topics. We have our product updates blog, which will let you know of new features that are coming out. We're doing a lot of back-end work right now to update it for future technology. And so you won't see that many changes for a little while, but I can tell you there's some big things in store that are really cool. We're just keeping things up to date on the back end. And that's less exciting, but absolutely necessary. We also have a resource center. Uh, and this is for all of our products where we have all sorts of different training resources or just resources for your ministry that tell you best practices. Resources.concordiatechnology.org. Again, I want to remind you, you can start your free 30-day trial at 360unite.com. If you're ready to buy, if, or if you're just curious about pricing, you can go over to our website. I'll pull that up right now. We're very transparent about our pricing. I hate it when I go to buy a software and they say, speak to our team for pricing. Well, then I know that pricing is flexible and if my you know, negotiation skills aren't great, I'm gonna get a bad deal. Well, I'm sorry to say our pricing is not negotiable, but it is very transparent. You always know what you're gonna get. You go in here to pricing, you can see some details about it. We have three different plans, standard, advanced, and premium. And we have the details of what's included in them. So um, we'll, I'll talk about discounts in just a second. In the standard plan, you get all of our site layouts or support, unlimited number of pages. You don't get the custom domain for free, that $30 a year. You don't get any emails with that either. You get two admins, two gigabytes of storage, and there is a $199 startup fee, but that includes initial onboarding and training. So at that price, it's $35 a year, or sorry, it's $35 a month, but if you behave for it per year, you get two months free. So it's $350. Now, if you are a Church360 members customer, or you subscribe to Shepherd Staff Support, you get a discount. You save $10 a month. 
Um, and so if you're paying for the everything annually, it's $250. This is where I recommend people get started. If they are kind of testing their waters on, they're testing the waters on how much do I want to spend on my new website, how much time, start with this. You can always advance from there. Our most popular plan though is our advanced edition. And what's included in this is not only all of what I mentioned, you get a custom domain. So that $30 uh, a year fee goes away. It's included in that. That's just part of what we do. Um, you get six admins, 10 gigabytes of storage space. Uh, that's with the discount. It's $50 a month. If you don't have Shepherd Staff or Church 360, it's $60 a month or $600 annually. And the premium edition is when you need all the space in the world. You're doing lots of video, you've got audio, you know, you need unlimited storage space. You've got a whole team of people working. You need unlimited number of admins. You need email addresses with those. Um, yeah, don't start there. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason to start there until you know you need that. Uh, and that's always my recommendation. We've had plenty of people go from advanced to premium, but almost everybody starts at standard or advanced until they outgrow it. That's our pricing. It's available for you on our website. Again, remember there is that $199 startup fee. Um, so that does take effect for that first year, but it doesn't continue later on. All right, back here. Let's get into Q&A. Now I've got a number of questions waiting for me. Uh, a few ground rules with Q&A. Type your questions into the GoToWebinar chat. A recording will be emailed within 48 hours. Um, I forget if I had said that before. It usually takes less than that. Um, and then if you're watching the recording, you missed the boat on live question and answers, but that doesn't mean you can't ask your questions. Email them to support at cts.cph.org and they will be happy to help you out. Like I mentioned before, my email address at the beginning, you can always email me. I'm just not in the office as much as I used to be. So I probably won't get back to you as quickly as I would like. So contact our support team. They'll get back to you much quicker. All right, let's take a look at some of these questions. Charles, thank you. I just saw good luck in the seminary. I really appreciate that. All right, um, one of the first questions was, what web architecture is Unite based on? WordPress, et cetera. Well, it's actually based on its own proprietary platform. Um, we've developed that in-house. In fact, a number of our developers are Lutheran pastors. Um, they do this as part of their ministry. They have a development background and they serve the church in this way. Some of them are even part-time pastors and full-time developers. So they've built this all. This is a key part of where we are not bound to anybody else's choices. We get to update it as much as possible. Now, in web design, of course, there's always other choices. There are always other companies that we're dependent on because it's just the way internet technology works out. But uh, something like WordPress, when they make an update, everybody has to scramble and make sure to get that in there. We're actively updating ours on our own, on our own timeline, and our own, you know, what we want to do. And so it's all based on our own proprietary information, and uh, it's tied in with our other applications, which gives us lots of opportunities for integrations. Um, Charles is asking, integrate to online giving like Vanco. So we do integrate with Vanco. Vanco has been our partner for years and they're fantastic to work with. Unite, however, doesn't really have a natural integration um, because Vanco has got a wonderful interface. And so you can just link to your giving page from there. Now, if you're using Church360 members, it integrates seamlessly. All of your offerings come in, they make batches on your offerings, like all that works together. We're looking at ways of adding it to Unite, but they've um, They've launched such a wonderful giving tool that we haven't wanted to like condense it down into a little cell and put it on a website. That's really not the most effective way to get gifts. So we work with them all the time. It, there's just nothing native in Unite, although there is in Church 360 members. Um, I think I already answered this, but just to clarify that, because I think you asked before I answered, is the $30 hosting cost part of the fee or is it an additional? And that goes back to which plan are you in? Advanced and premium, it's included. Standard, it's not. Uh, and that's just for your domain um, with that. Yep. How often do the themes or architecture get updated as better technology comes along? Um, we are 
always looking to fix things. So if technology changes and the theme doesn't look right, well, then we fix it then. Um, we don't add themes that frequently because styles are, you know, styles are very subjective. And some of them are just not meant for templates. Some of the best websites that are out there are custom designed and really can't be templated. And so we do add them periodically, but I, I'll tell you, it's not that often because uh, once you get one set, most churches don't change them. So we focus on things that all of our churches can use. That's where the most of our development goes in. But I'm sure we'll be having some new ones coming out pretty soon because uh, it's been a little while since we released new ones and we like to do that periodically. All right. Um, we'd like to keep our current domain name so that when we change over Unite, we would be accessed at the same location. Carol's asking that, and Carol, that is absolutely possible. There's two paths you can use, you can do with that. So the first path is, is if you have access to your domain, you can use the information here under settings and just change where the domain points, meaning you'll continue to manage it, you'll continue to pay for it, um, we just give you the information to switch it over. And this information here will also make sure that you have a secure website. So that little lock icon shows up. And so you'll be able to do that using your current domain provider. The other option is that you could transfer your domain to be managed by us. And so it's still the same address. It's just managed by us. And there's a few extra steps. Our support team can help you with that. Uh, and then depending on your plan, you'll either be paying us for it or we'll be paying for it um, as part of your plan and you don't have to worry about it. Um, and so you're basically transferring the management over to us. You're not transferring the ownership, you still own it. And if you ever wanna take it with you, there's no questions asked, you take it away. Uh, but we manage it for you. So you can keep the same domain, We either you manage it or we manage it, but you don't have to change your address. All right, what's next on here? Martha says, I'm setting up my website, but I'm locked out of post activities and users. In addition, I can't customize the background color of my homepage. Is this because I'm using the trial option? Um, no, Martha, that shouldn't be a trial option. That sounds like your permissions aren't set. So if you set up the trial and didn't invite anybody else, then there might be a problem. Our support team can help you with that. But it sure sounds to me like somebody else set it up and invited you but didn't give you the full admin permissions, probably because it is a trial and you only get one admin with a trial. Um, that's my guess as to what happened. So uh, to change permissions for users, you would go, they would go to the users, select you and change role. Um, but I'm guessing that's what it is. And, I, and if I remember right, the pricing says, yeah, the trial is one admin. So that free 30 day trial. So that may be what happened for you, Martha. Um, you could always go set up your own trial, play around with it, and then just know you're gonna delete it. You could be like, Martha's test account, <laughs> and play around with it. That's totally fine. You get 30 days to play with it, and, and if you need more, our support team or our, our software consultants are more than willing to help out. All right, well, I'm over time, I apologize. I think I got all the questions. There might be, um, yeah, there might be a few more. Um, I don't see them right now. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. I did want to tell you one other thing. If you're ready to get started, on our pricing page, we have schedule a call. This is where you would go, schedule a call with a software consultant, and they'll be able to answer all your individual questions. Talk to you about your trial, what you like, what you don't like. Um, you know, Figure out what works best for your church. Personalized touch, You know, every situation is different. Pricing stays the same, um, but they'll be able to help you figure out how to get started. So just go here and click schedule a call. Well, that is it for me. Oh, I, I did have one more slide just to remind you. Uh, we do have our online help center. And um, actually we don't have in-app chat yet. I meant to remove that. It's not in, we're testing that out with some of our other products. It'll be added to Unite shortly. But we have support um, via email and also the phone number. So call the support team if you have any questions, email them, it's, they'll be willing to help you out. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. If you have any other questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Be on the lookout for the recording and we'll see you next time. Thanks again.